Hi, this is your host Sapan Bhartia and welcome to our 2022 predictions series. And we have with us once again, Kit Merker, Chief Operating Officer at Noble9. Kit, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here. Before I ask you to grab your crystal ball and share a prediction, please could you tell us uh, what is Noble9 all about? Sure thing. Yeah, Noble9 is a software reliability platform focused on service level objectives or SLOs. And uh, really what we're here to do is to help companies find the right level of reliability, you know, good enough to make sure that customers keep coming back and um, using their banking services or streaming videos or uh, retail site. But, uh, you know, with a gap to perfection, you know, software is not perfect. And so we help people manage that gap. And that's really where the innovation comes from. And that's where the profitability comes from. So that's what Normal 9 is. It's a, a platform for helping um, all kinds of different digital companies uh, serve their customers and also keep their employees uh, productive and engaged. Excellent. Now it's time for you to pick up your crystal ball and share with us what predictions you have. Well, I've been thinking a lot about the uh, predictions. So I'm going to start with my first prediction, and it's going to be all about SLOs. So first prediction is that SLOs will cause a major rethink on how tech debt is approached. And so when you think about tech debt or technical debt, what this is is the uh, the issues or errors or bugs that are deferred, the things that either drag down the team or um, maybe, you know, aren't required to serve customers today, but, you know, eventually will bite you. And SLOs and, and technical debt actually go hand in hand. So we built some uh, capabilities in our product to help solve this problem, because uh, right now tech debt is seen, I think, as a punishment for engineering teams or, uh, you know, something that um, maybe is crying wolf. You know, we need to fix it. But we don't spend time on it. And by using this service level objective approach, um, it's much easier to tie the business impact of technical debt. And this is really emerging as a new approach to uh, how companies and software development teams think about uh, their backlog and how they bring to the fore the uh, technical debt issues that have real customer impact and defer the things that don't. So that's my first prediction is that this uh, SLO approach is going to make tech debt management a lot easier. My second prediction is that it's going to be a lot harder to retain and recruit en engineers and developers if you don't handle your software reliability well. Um, what I mean by this is uh, there's this great resignation happening. I think everybody's heard about this. Um, and in the market, in the tech market in particular, engineers have had to deal with scaling up to demands during the pandemic and as software has become more prevalent in our lives, whether that's you know food delivery, uh, entertainment through streaming services, et cetera. All of these, uh, these large scale services have real engineers behind the scenes that are giving up their evenings and weekends um, to on-call. And when those engineers have a choice, you know, they can join different companies, um, you know, they're not necessarily going to the office. So the perks and the kind of the office space aren't really a differentiator. And what we're seeing and I'm predicting is that um, engineers and developers are going to choose to work for companies that have a appropriate strategy for managing reliability, um, incidents, on-call and technical debt, um, because that is a major factor in their lives. And that that I think is going to grow and, and continue to grow as uh, companies um, need to continue to recruit engineers and they become critical to uh, delivering digital services. My third prediction is that the metrics we use to create SLOs or service level objectives will expand. Um, when we think about SLOs traditionally, oftentimes it's thought of as part of the infrastructure. You know, it's the, the servers, it's the cloud, it's the CPUs. And um, we're trying to prevent infrastructure issues on the back end. We're trying to find out where, you know, our service is going to break, um, where the database might fall over or the, the uh, Kubernetes cluster might uh, fail. What we're seeing and what I'm predicting is that uh, over time, the SLO data is going to come from a variety of places. For, for example, think about end-to-end -end business processes. Maybe you're a bank and you care about the mortgage process end-to-end. -end. And that might touch, you know, dozens of systems, both internally and externally. It might touch manual processes. It might touch the customer who's, you know, collecting documents and has milestones they need to meet. And that entire process can be measured with, uh, with SLOs from a variety of data sources. Um, so think about, you know, SLOs for things like security issues. You know, maybe you have a fleet of servers that need to get patched because of log four shell, right? And you want to know what percentage of them have been patched by, by certain days. So each of these different use cases, whether it's customer facing, uh, whether it's security related, whether it's about a cloud migration, this is where the service level objective approach is going to expand. And we're going to see more and more systems um, providing data that can be measured as these uh, SLOs. And then my fourth prediction, um, my fourth and last prediction, is that the roles uh, or people who are going to be using SLOs is going to expand and grow. And uh, traditionally, you know, we've thought of SLOs as a tool for site reliability engineering, right? SREs are the main uh, people who are uh, promoting SLOs. Google made a book about it. And there's a lot of people who have had this site reliability engineering mindset 
that have adopted SLOs. Well, what we're seeing in the market now and what I think is going to continue is that product managers, um, traditional app dev, um, platform engineers are all caring about SLOs a lot more. There's a big movement right now in FinOps where financially minded people who are thinking about the cost of cloud and they want to add that context. So it's not just about driving down the cost of cloud, but it's also about um, making sure that the, the service is efficient on a unit basis. So we're serving our customers. What does it cost us to serve them um, and managing that cost, not just, you know, trying to, sl- you know, spend less, but to spend an appropriate amount based on the service we're providing to customers that they're getting the right level of uh, latency, availability, et cetera. And as product managers are thinking more and more about SaaS services and APIs as products, they need to have a way of measuring and communicating the reliability expectations of their service. And so service level objectives fit into these different roles. It's going to go far beyond this. And in fact, there's even a, a role we talk about called the slogician, which was coined by John Wilkes in a white paper he wrote about SLOs. The idea of a slogician is somebody who is, um, their, their entire focus is on defining the math behind how a service should operate um, in different conditions. So, uh, so that's my last prediction. Roles using SLOs are going to expand. And uh, I think we're already seeing it, but I think it's going to go even further. Excellent. Thanks for sharing this prediction. Now, what is going to be the focus of the company in 2022 based on these predictions as well? So Noble9 has been expanding uh, and growing quite a bit in the last year. Uh, we we uh, almost more than doubled the size of our employees. We went to market with um, a couple new products. We've been delivering new features. And now what we're seeing is an incredible demand for organizations adopting Uh, SLOs. And so our main focus this year is going to be to service those customers, make sure that they're getting um, the features that they uh, need on the roadmap um, and uh, continuing to innovate and then expanding into new areas. We're trying to meet more um, use cases beyond the traditional SRE reliability use cases and thinking about things that impact businesses like I was talking about before. So, you know, the cost to serve, um, the speed of innovation, uh, managing that productivity and and work-life balance for engineers so they they stay on on board. Um, Those use cases are really important. Um, We're also going to be expanding the the ease of use. So we've added some new uh, AI-based capabilities to predict uh, what SLOs you need. Um, That'll be coming out soon. We have some customers beta testing that now. Uh, we have some easier integrations and more data sources, just kind of ever expanding that that workflow. Um, and then, you know, fitting more and more into the CICD, you know, the continuous integration, continuous delivery. So uh, making it easy for people to do things like um, progressive releases based on SLOs or auto scaling based on SLOs or checking in the source control, uh, checking the SLOs into source control and having it be part of that CICD process. Um, these are all kind of the feature capabilities we're doing. And then uh, I think the other big thing for us this year is going to be about expanding the education. You know, a year ago, people didn't really know what SLOs are. Over the last year, we've seen more and more people um, kind of uh, becoming aware of this uh, this powerful technique. And we're going to continue to expand that uh, educational practice this year as well. So that's what we're going to be. We're going to be busy. We'll put it that way. Excellent. Uh, Kit, thank you so much for sharing these predictions, these insights, and of course, telling more about the company. Uh, as usual, I look forward to talk to you again soon, but hopefully next year. Thank you. Thank you so much.